Today we're going to measure to the nanosecond the difference between the clocks of two computers. We're going to use IEEE 1588s, which is a standard for the Precision Time Protocol, or PTP. We're going to also be running a PTP for Linux, an open source implementation. I'm Kevin, and this is my time lab. I spent most of my career at Intel, where I was responsible for developing timing-related standards and technologies and working to get those technologies integrated into standard computers and network interfaces like uh, the ones that we'll be measuring today. So we'll get to the measurements, but first I'm going to start with what I think is a pretty interesting animation that we'll look at in more detail in a few minutes. Here is a rather uninteresting orange line showing the clock drift between the two computers, uh, the clock offset. You, I'd say time offset, but some physicists um, might ask for clarification, so I'll try to avoid that one. The offset is growing in what looks like a line. Actually, it is a line because I drew a line between the first measurement and the last measurement. The actual clock offset is plotted behind in blue. And this makes sense because there is a pretty much constant frequency offset between these, but not quite a constant frequency offset. And after 20 years of uh, working to explain and illustrate this idea of it's not the drift, it's the drift of the drift to people, I'm happy to say that today, for the first time, probably in the history of timekeeping, uh, you're going to be able to see an animation of actual drift of the drift becoming visible. In order to see the variation of the time offset compared to this orange line, we need to change the visual. And after several days with matplotlib and the pandas data analytics library, I had hundreds of lines of Python um, are going to now make that visible to you, maybe for the first time. I don't know. So we start out with a ramp and slowly, exponentially, we zero out the slope and continuously scale the resulting graph. Here we go. you can start seeing it emerge. All right, so if we started, if we set the time receiver, the frequency of the time receiver to just the right frequency, then there would be no long-term drift, but we do have variation around that long-term frequency. And that's what we're really gonna be focusing on a lot today. And the offset is uh, varies by 500 microseconds over some number of uh, fractions of a day. So that's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's dig in. Last time I showed that a short Ethernet cable connecting the computers resulted in a small link delay measurement and a longer Ethernet cable resulted in a larger offset. And again, this was pretty impressive. It was down to not very many nanoseconds of variation. And you could actually measure speed of light through the coax cable. And we use this protocol and I'm not going to go through it in any more detail. Once we know the link delay, now we can measure the clock offset. In PTP, the message is called a sync message. It's timestamped when it's transmitted and the timestamps passed in a follow-up message sometime later. And it's re received and uh, timestamp T2 is captured. Once the receiver, time receiver, has both T1 and T2, it can make a calculation. It knows that this time T2 is the same inertial reference frame and so on, is equal to T1 plus the link delay. So if we subtract T1 plus the link delay from this T2, we should get zero, and if we don't, well, now we've just measured how far off the receiver is compared to the transmitter. And again, we're assuming that this delay is constant, and but we're not assuming that the rate of the progression of time at the receiver and transmitter is the same. In fact, as we just saw, the rate of the progression of the measurement of time with real systems is substantially off. I think it was off by six millionths of a second every second. And we'll see some even larger numbers here in a little bit. So this is what we're going to do. We're not going to try to change anything to correct for the clock in any kind of programmatic way today. That'll be in the future. We just want to analyze the clock offset itself and some things that may affect the frequency over time. A computer has maybe some CPUs. It has maybe some Ethernet controllers or Wi-Fi, maybe some GPUs. These parts of the computer have different clocks, and those clocks are driven from drif different crystals, sometimes uh, crystal oscillators that are not temperature compensated, for example. So they will just drift apart. Now, in the last uh, decade or more, uh, at least 
for many CPUs. The CPUs have a common source of clock that is the same and almost immediately accessible to application software. Uh, if you think that's important, you're welcome. But the point is that these have different clocks. And today we're going to measure the offset between the <coughs> ETP hardware clock or physical hardware clock in the one ethernet NIC and that in another computer connected with this ethernet cable. So that's what we're going to do today. But at the end, we'll also look at the difference between this clock down here and that over time. To do that, I have a little script called uh, DoTX, which runs on the time transmitter, which sends its time, uh, runs PTP for all with some parameters. I have a DoRx script, which runs, I'll show it to you in a second, which runs Linux PTP as well. And I can, I added a couple of options since last time. Uh, I can either plot the offset or the frequency that's being measured in real time and some other things. And also this PHC down in the Ethernet NIC can be controlled and we can ask for the capabilities. We can ask for the current time in nanoseconds since 1970. We can ask to set the time. We can ask for the frequency. We can set the frequency and we can also compare the CPU's notion of what time it is compared to the NIC's notion of time. So we'll be using most of these in the lab. So let's jump over to the bench. We have here a computer, which is the time transmitter and another computer, which is the time receiver uh, or ethernet cable. And there's also a Raspberry Pi Pico here, which is um, connected to this temperature and I think humidity sensor. There's So we can also measure the ambient temperature while we're making the measurement. And you'll see how that comes into play in a second. There's also a GPS right here. And uh, I'll do a, a YouTube uh, probably on that in the future. Okay, so we have our bench set up. Here I have the time transmitter and the time receiver in a couple of windows. And then I have a couple other windows I can jump to for uh, some things while ptp for l is running. So let's get started with um, do the R, the, the time transmitter. There's not much that happens here um, visually. So it's just going to run. It's uh, actually running the 8021AS version of, or the profile from the IEEE 8021AS. TSN standard, and it's sending these sync messages and it's measuring the link delay, but there's no one on the other side at this point really paying any attention. So let's fix that by coming to the time receiver here. And uh, this is a, just a little script that runs ptp for l Actually, I modified the source code so that it would print in a little better way for the animation or for the real-time logging. There's also a um, configuration file for Linux PTP, which is here if you're interested. But let's um, do rx and i'm going to plot the frequency in real time so here we go there's our plot window okay so we can see the offset that the time receiver is observing is about six and a half hertz per million so about six microseconds every second six millionths of a second the receiver is losing that amount of time in that amount of time. Okay, and it's getting uh, increasingly negative, maybe because my computer fan and GPU are running and it's getting warmer in here. Certainly it feels like it. So what I'm going to do is use this little can of compressed air and I'm going to blow some into the time transmitter and let's see what happens to the frequency. Here we go. Not sure where the crystal is, but what you can see is a large negative change to the frequency. And then it uh, responds, it recovers relatively quickly, and we will expect it to kind of follow that exponential down as the room heats up. All right, let's try the time receiver. It's a little harder for me to get my hand in here, but I think I can, I think I can do it. Here we go. And the frequency goes in the opposite direction, which I guess you would think that would make sense uh, conceptually or uh, logically or uh, intuitively. You would think that would make sense intuitively. Actually, my dog just broke into the room and opened the door. And so I think... Um, that might have also thrown off a little bit of airflow and that's also disturbed this i guess the point it's actually my wife's dog uh the point is that uh temperature 
dramatically affects the frequency. Uh, it's not that much. I guess you could say it's by uh, by a tenth of a part per million, uh, uh, maybe a fifth of a part per million with these kinds of um, temperature changes. And you can see it's it's changing uh, relatively fast, which means that if it was losing 6.5 microseconds per second, uh, soon it might be losing 6.6 .6 or 6.8 microseconds per second. So again, it's not that the frequency is different, it's that the frequency is different and it's changing continuously by temperature, pressure, shock, um, voltage, age over years, it'll also change, which is pretty easy to track. Okay, so let's stop the PTP for L on the receiver and let's run it again, but using um, plotting the offset. Now we're going to look at the actual offset, actually from which those frequencies were just computed. And if we look carefully and we watch for 10 seconds, we would expect that the offset will be about 65 nanoseconds. 9, 10 seconds, yeah, about 60 nanoseconds. 65, which makes perfect sense. So now we're regenerating our nice uh, linear graph. In this case, there's no line. It's the actual measurements. What I can do now is um, uh, PHC control. So again, this is changing hardware clock inside of the Ethernet controller. I specify it's PTP0 and I want the uh, capabilities. There we go. So we have a bunch of capabilities that the NIC hardware and driver are capable of and it's all exposed nicely up to the user space. So we can also ask for the uh, current frequency. We can uh, ask to get the current time. There are the nanoseconds, which is uh, close, actually. What's more interesting for this particular one is the frequency. And there has not been any frequency offset applied to either Ethernet NIC PHC at this point. They're just free running and their frequency source, the quartz crystals are just simply off by six parts per million or so. What I can do though is I can add 6,800 parts per billion, 6.8 parts per million, to this time receiver and it will adjust the rate at which the receiver is um, counting time. And you can see that it flattened out. In fact, if I make it, uh, you know, uh, 14 thousand what we should see is it's now ramping back up obviously it makes no sense to do this manually in real life and we really want a control system often and uh, it'll be a, a pid controller we'll experiment with that in the future maybe uh, some reinforcement learning model i think that would be pretty interesting as well what we can see is that the offset is affected by the frequency the frequency is affected by the temperature and other things and we can uh, change the frequency in a programmatic way or manually from uh, user space. And again, we'll do that in the future. So those are all the knobs that we have. Let's go look at some data. So I captured this particular uh, set of data over what you can see is about three and a half days. It starts just before uh, uh, one because of the time of day I started and I wanted to correlate the temperature with the um, uh, temperature with the, the frequency. So there we go, there's the offset and it's 8.3 milliseconds of variation uh, beyond the 1.8 seconds of variation that was caused by the frequency drift. Actually, let me go back and share one other thing here. Um, I mentioned that I have the um, Raspberry Pi with the temperature sensor and what i can do is just uh it's it's continuously 24 7 when the computer's on measuring the temperature and sending it over serial or at least attempting to um tty it's this one there we go so and this is how i logged the temperature ptp is running so that there's an offset measurement every second it's then also making a frequency measurement every every second i had to make a, a change the code to make it do that and we're measuring the temperature every second that's what you're going to see here so this is over three and a half days
So the temperature varies. You can see a diurnal variation as the house cooled off overnight and uh, warmed up in the morning and, and so on. And there's the offset over time. Uh, we can also see the frequency plotted over time, and there's quite a bit of variation. Uh, there's better than uh, half a part per million, and this was not with spraying any freeze spray into the computers at all. And we can see uh, about 8 milliseconds of variation in addition to the PPM offset that we, that we can see up there. And I decided that it's just too hard to analyze and I needed a control. So overnight, I ran the same measurement and ran a fan on medium on the bench, moving air through the computers and hoping to smooth out the frequency changes due to fans turning on inside the computer and other things happening. The CPU gets busy on something and heats up and heats up the crystal. So I wanted to just flatten those out. And sure enough, the frequency more or less was on with your eyes blurred, more or less increasing monotonically. And we don't need to animate this, but uh, what you would expect, the frequency is increasing. And so we had a kind of a smooth curve for the flattened time offset. So this was a lot of fun and I again captured probably way too much data. In the outro I'll probably show you some of the data that I created with that uh, Python script. But I decided uh, before I went to press with this YouTube I wanted to also measure the offset between the CPU and the Ethernet controller. So I re-ran a test, but now also capturing the CMP, comparing the two. And uh, you can see the furnace turned on and the frequency was relatively flat with some spikes. Um, and what you'll see here is a pattern. And then we're going to compare that to the pattern we see within the two computers. Because again, this is the offset due to the frequency and other changes between computers. So remember this, um, remember this shape here. And that is the shape between the two Ethernet controllers, between the PHCs in those two Ethernet NICs. But again, I was capturing with the PHC control this offset as well, and I plotted that over here, and I plotted the time receivers over here. What you can see is they're, they're quite different, quite different shapes. And the point here is that the variation of the PPM, the variation of the frequency difference, is the thing that causes problems in a lot of instances. For example, if you have a long chain of Ethernet controllers, which are all working to compensate delays, and we'll talk about that in the future, um, all of them could have, will have crystals, and all of those crystals will have somewhat correlated, but not um, completely the same frequency differences. Some of them will be receiving the blast of cold air sooner than others and keeping all of these control loops um, stable and maintaining the lock of the frequency in these long chains and eliminating gate peaking and peaking and so on uh, is one of the big challenges, especially for the time sensitive networking or TSN application of uh, of 1588. In the future, I'll look more into the uh, actual offset of these crystals using the GPS. So we have a rock solid reference. And remember, these crystals were changing kind of the same. And so as the temperature heated up, uh, they were kind of zeroing out the frequency change of the other one to some degree. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens when we are using a really stable source. And GPS is a super stable source of frequency and time. Uh, if you're interested in uh, getting in contact with me, feel free. If you want to take a look at the previous episode, I'm going to try to put it up there. And uh, yes, this is some of the data that I generated, graphs I generated from uh, from the data. Um, this was, I think, the uh, three uh, the overnight test, uh, histograms and so on. A lot of fun. One more thing. I'd love to connect with some of the people who find these videos interesting. Find out who you are. Take a look in the description. And down there is a link to a Zoom meeting. Come and join me and we can talk about the material, we can talk about future videos, uh, whatever you like.